untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a 5 color Sanctum deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And one of the main payoff cards for playing a Sanctum deck is Sanctum of All, the 5 mana legendary enchantment shrine, saying at the beginning of your upkeep you may search your library and or graveyard for a shrine card and put it onto the battlefield. And if an ability of another shrine you control triggers while you control 6 or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. So the goal of the deck is to get a Sanctum of All in play, which will help us assemble all five other shrines. We've got a blue one, a red one, a green one, a black one, and a white one. So if we get all six of these shrines in play, we get the doubling effect from Sanctum of All, which will eventually close out the game very quickly, thanks to the Drain ability from Sanctum of the Stone Fangs, and this is the main win condition in the deck. And then the other shrines will help us draw cards, generate mana, tap creatures down, and potentially take out creatures or even planeswalkers. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck at 1 mana starting out with our Sanctum of Tranquil Light, 1 mana for a legendary enchantment shrine, so because these are all legendary we can only have one in play at the same time. And then for 5 and a white we can tap target creature, but this ability costs 1 less to activate for each shrine we control, including the Sanctum of Tranquil Light itself, so it's only going to cost us 5 mana if we have only the Sanctum of Tranquil Light in play. Then we've got two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a cheap removal spell. Can also be kicked later in the game to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers, as well as two copies of Heartless Act as another cheap removal spell. And then three copies of Sanctum of Stone Fangs, which at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of shrines you control. So the fact that this happens at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase means you can, if you have a Sanctum of All in play, still potentially search up a Sanctum of Stone Fangs and have it trigger in your turn, so you get that immediate value from your Sanctum of All. Then at 3 mana we've got a bit of ramp with a Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, which at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase adds X mana of any one color to our mana pool, where X is the number of shrines we control. So a turn 3 Fruitful Harvest can set up a turn 4 Sanctum of All, which is all we're interested in, and then the extra mana from Fruitful Harvest can also be very useful once we start drawing extra cards with our Calm Waters. Then we also have three copies of Sanctum of Shattered Heights, which for one mana lets us discard a land card or shrine card to deal X damage to target creature or planeswalker where X is the number of shrines we control. So especially once we start drawing extra cards with our Calm Waters, discarding those additional lands or shrines we don't need anymore becomes very trivial, so we can even take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. And then we've got two copies of Thirst for Meaning, which at instant speed lets us draw three cards, and then discard two cards unless we discard an enchantment card, and of course if we draw into an additional legendary enchantment we already have in play, we can easily get rid of it, so Thirst can also help us find our missing shrines. And then at 4 mana, Sanctum of Calm Waters is an important one. At the beginning of our pre combat main phase we can draw X cards, where X is the number of shrines we control, and if we do discard a card, so even by itself we can draw one discard one each turn, but of course becomes much better the more shrines we have in play, and this will fuel our card advantage and help us find a Sanctum of All if we don't have one already, and this can also help enable our Shattered Tides to take out more creatures or planeswalkers. And then our sweeper of choice is Extinction Event, which is only a single black mana to cast, so that's why we prefer it over something like Shatter the Sky, which is double white and a lot more difficult on the mana base. And then we get to choose odd or even, and exile each creature with covered mana cost of the chosen value. Zero is even, tokens are usually even unless they're uh, specified otherwise. And then we've got the full playset of Sanctum of All, which of course is the build around card in a deck. Now to make sure we have a good mana base, we do have 29 lands total, although we do have a lot of triomes we can cycle as well. And then you'll notice one of each basic land alongside four copies of Fabled Passage, two of each pathway. Of course the pathways aren't entirely balanced, so we've got a little bit more white mana and red mana compared to the other colors. And to make up for it we've got four copies of Zagoth Triome, and if you look at our mana distribution we also have more Sultai colored cards in the deck, so it makes sense to have more of the Sultai Triome, and then one of each other Triome as well, which we can always cycle if we're flooding out a bit. And then before I forget, we also get to play with Jigantha, the Wellspring, as our companion, since we don't have any double colored cards in the deck, so this gives us an additional mana sink and win condition in the late game. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like an acceptable hand, extra mana with Fruitful Harvest, and then Thirst to look for Sanctum of All. 
facing a Kiruga, the Macro Sage deck. Kick things off with Triome. And a Temple of Deceit. And there's Sanctum of All, perfect. I guess we'll get rid of our Fabled Passage, which can get a Swamp. And we're looking at a turn for Sanctum of All. Opponent puts Waker of Waves in the graveyard. That looks familiar. And a Cultivate. Alright, Sir Point's ramping. This might be the Emergent Ultimatum Reanimator deck. So, just double checking which color we need. Blue should be fine. Migration path for more ramp, so next room we could see ultimatum. In the meantime, I think we want to draw some cards. And then discard one stone fangs will do. So all shrines have been assembled. So this will start dealing 12 damage. And there's an emergent ultimatum. Can use our shattered heights to deal with any creatures that show up. Could have also discarded thirst for meaning and kept more lands and sanctums in hand to discard our shattered heights. So they can have Unbreakable Bond and Beanstalk will put Titanothrax back. And we should be able to take care of those creatures pretty easily. So we can kill one of them end of turn. And then there's nothing to search up anymore. But I will draw some cards. And then don't need thirst anymore. Alright, I think we're good. And yeah, our opponent has seen the writing on the wall here. They're just gonna die to our Stone Fangs next turn, and there's just too much removal for them to work through. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand seems fine. We've got a nice mix of Sanctums and the mana to cast them. So we're gonna probably prioritize playing Fruitful Harvest on Curve. Although now I can play Stone Fangs as well. Alright, Bastion of Remembrance. So some sort of mono black graveyard sacrifice deck. So, uh, this can be either white or red. So I guess red is fine here. Play Fruitful Harvest, and then next turn I can play Calm Waters and Sanctum of Tranquil Light. Or we can wipe the board, get rid of all even-costed creatures. Now we're not taking a ton of damage, so I could still wait. And then make some blue mana. Play this, and then Tranquil Light seems fine. Suppose I could have also made white mana, and then played Tranquil Light, and then still had white mana up, although I guess this is 
Gonna cost us one and a white to activate, so not enough mana to use it yet. Alright, there's Lurus, which is gonna get back Vessel. So now getting rid of all evenly costed creatures and then killing Lurus seems fine. And we should be able to find our missing Sanctums soon. So land can go. Make some black mana. Yeah, don't even have to get rid of Lurus, really. So we'll just play Sanctum. And then my opponent concedes. Alright, that was another relatively fast game, so... Just getting our Sanctums online, backing it up with a bit of creature interaction, is a pretty good recipe in a lot of matchups. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, I'm not gonna decline turn 3 Harvest into turn 4 Sanctum of all. And then we've got green mana, so I can even s fetch a swamp here. So we have turn one thirsts, or turn two, I suppose. Sometimes it can be better to save Fable Passage for later, depending on your mana needs, but I guess it worked out since we drew Stone Fangs on turn two. And of course, with Fruitful Harvest fixing our mana, it's less of a concern. So next turn, Timber Crown Pathway will give us green mana for Fruitful Harvest, which will set up turn 4 Sanctum of All, facing blue-red. Well, if this is a control deck, sneaking Stone Fangs into play on turn 2 is nice, since not a ton of ways for a blue-red deck to get rid of it, other than maybe bouncing it and encountering it on the way back. Fruitful Harvest resolves. But it looks like they have a Brazen Borrower to bounce it. Alright. That's okay. Passage can get white mana, so we can even play Sanctum of All without the need for Fruitful Harvest now. Resolves. Might see the Brazen Borrower end of turn. If we want to play around a counter spell, we also have the option of playing a Kicked Thirst by making black mana with Fruitful Harvest to kill Brazen Borrower instead. Mitigate how much damage we take early on. Alright, main phase anticipates, so now they would need some pretty specific counter spell to counter my Sanctum, and now with Opt, that's no longer a concern. Of course, I could have another Brazen Borrower to bounce it before we get any benefit from it. Sanctum of All resolves. Opponent appears to be holding a shock given their pause here. And we'll see whether or not they have another bounce spell. Alright, they just had a one mana cycler with Boon of the Wishgiver. Double vision, I like it. Well, we don't have any ways of removing enchantments really. But uh, let's see if we can go over the top. Start drawing some cards with Calm Waters. And then, usually a good idea to draw first with Calm Waters before deciding which colors to make. And then what do we get rid of? Um, I guess a land is fine. Make black mana.
So now I gotta hope they don't have like an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, to clean up all my enchantments. Or plenty of bounce spells to return these to my hand. But they're already down to 12, so it doesn't take much for Stone Fangs to kill them. Double Vision, pretty nice alongside Instance, since you can get the effect to double spell in your turn, and then if you have an instant, you can do it again in the opponent's turn. Experimental Overload, making two 5-5s, five and returning some cards back to hand. Pretty strong, although plenty of answers for the creatures here, especially once we get Shattered Heights. I should probably get an additional white source so we can activate Tranquil Light more than once. And now we get the doubling effect, so opponent's going to be down to one life. And sure, we'll draw some more cards. Just in case. And get rid of... doesn't matter too much. Having backup copies of all our Sanctums could be useful, just in case my point has a way to get rid of them all. And then... I guess we can just cast Extinction Events. Although I'm going to have to discard to hand size anyway, so might as well do it like this. And discard another land. Run out Gigantha. And it should suffice. Alright, I think we're good. And then discard a bunch. I guess one Sanctum of All can go, one Calm Waters, and then maybe one Heartless Acts. Want to keep his Stone Fangs. Alright. But they don't even have the mana to cast an Ugin the Spirit Dragon, so it's going to be difficult for them to come back. Cycles, so they need a bounce effect for Stone Fangs and a removal spell for Gigantha. Now, luckily, Calm Waters is a May ability you don't have to draw, as opposed to the Blue Honden that we've seen in the Anthology expansion if you're playing historic versions of the Sanctum deck. So there's no risk of decking with Calm Waters at least. Wolverine, okay. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Can just tap it down. Gotta make use of our Tranquil Light every now and then to keep it satisfied. And there we go, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Kahira the Orphan Guard deck, and our hand's decent, we're missing a red, but we've got a bit of early interaction, and of course Sanctum of All, which is our most important card. Facing Savai Triome. And a Bronze Hide Line, alright. So I guess this is a Cat Tribal type deck. Can kill the Lion now with Heartless Act, that's probably a good idea. Next turn, maybe Triome plus Stone Fangs. So having these removal spells against a creature deck, definitely pretty key. All right, we drew two more Sanctums of All in the meantime. So gotta find that red mana soon. The green Sanctum would also be helpful. Can always run out Gigantha, and Gigantha can help us cast Sanctum of All. Although that's usually not going to work out.
All right, so put on definitely in multiple colors and mutates a Cub Warden onto the Symbiote. So Extinction Event on Ethan will get rid of Cub Warden and the 1-1 one -one tokens. All right, and there's Fruitful Harvest. Although for now, we probably want to clean up this mess. And then next turn we can harvest, which will make the red mana for Sanctum of All. Second Cub Warden. That's fine. And then Sanctum of All's first priority, probably getting Shattered Heights to start killing creatures. This is a hard cast Kahira from hand, so not a companion. And Cobordon hits for four. We do gain a bit of life off Stone Fangs to help us stay alive. So if they don't have an answer here, they're in trouble. Scheduled to take seven. So even with another pump effect, we should be fine. Ooh, snapped axe mutated onto Cubwarden. That's gonna give it double strike. So that's a lot of additional damage. Makes two one ones that get pumped by Kahira. So yeah, they got us very low here. So search library for Shattered Heights. And then we can run out Tranquil Light, discard three cards, take out Kahira and Cup Warden. Or I can play it safe and just kill Cup Warden, Kahira and still have additional stuff to discard. So we'll kill that now, and then I should probably just kill Kahira too. Although I guess I could have a second one, so I'll just pass here. Maybe could have put Gigantha in hand, I suppose. Shouldn't matter too much. And then we have two more Sanctum activations, so even if they have like a pump spell or indestructible trick, we can respond a second time. And this way if they have another Kahira in hand, it's no big deal. Alright, so kill this, discard this. Keeping the Sanctum of All in hand just in case they have another way to get rid of it, but it seems unlikely. Alright, and then we'll kill Kahira. Alright, so now we should be good to go. Calm Waters draws us into more lands and sanctums, so we can manage the creatures. And probably don't need Thirst anymore. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, sweet. So yeah, having some early removal against creature decks always helpful, and then Sanctum of All tends to take over the game pretty quickly. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Sagwith Trium doing some heavy lifting here, fixing for blue and black mana, and eventually green as well. Thirst will be a nice answer for the turn one crab. So, facing a mill deck. Opponent gets to mills for six. And they appear to be mono blue. Now we don't have any enchantment removal for cards like the Fairy's Tutelage, so that could give us some problems. But uh, definitely just gonna kill the crab. Play Mountain. 
This will be a white source. And then we can thirst discarding calm waters and look for additional mana sources. Now the good news is that if we find Sanctum of All, it can also get back enchantments from the graveyard. So there's no risk of running out of certain Sanctums in our library if they melt them all. So, land pass. Opponent cast inventory. I'll probably meaning right now, make sure it resolves. Alright, so turn for Sanctum of Calm Waters, and then we should be able to Sanctum of All on turn 5. Gotta hope to dodge a Teferi's Tutelage. That plus an into the story could do some damage, but there it is. Alright. Calm Waters also kind of helping the opponent's mill plan. So yeah, the mill matchup doesn't seem great unless we make a bunch of adjustments and add some enchantment removal to the main deck. Although then again against the blue-black rogues variant, enchantment removal is not really what you need. So I'm just double checking our colors here, but this should be fine. So that's gonna mill us for two. So Sanctum will definitely be getting stuff back from the graveyard if we have the option to keep more cards in our library. Second tutelage. Yeah, that's bad. So our best bet now is that our opponent doesn't have any card draw to back it up. Although them discarding a counterspell is not a good sign. Yeah, I wish we had an effect in standard, like maybe a clear the mind. Argument 1 out of range, 0 to 0. Interesting. To uh, shuffle our graveyard back into our library. What do I get rid of? Shouldn't matter too much. I guess uh, another Calm Waters. Should have got to get Sanctum of All in play to hopefully get Stone Fangs as soon as possible to close out the game. Wind Robber will mill for 4 as well. So down to 21 cards if they cast into the story right now. That would mill us for 16, which would be basically game over. Alright, GG's. So yeah, we've got answers for creatures, but not a ton of answers for enchantments, which is what we need in this matchup. And we'll definitely search our graveyard here, and uh, we'll get our stone fangs on the way out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand's missing a bit of card advantage, but if we draw into Calm Waters or Sanctum of All, we should have everything we need to cast those and take it from there, and then we do have some cheap interaction in the meantime to keep us alive. Might be a game where we cast Gigantha, who knows. Alright, I guess a life gain deck. Definitely happy to have Thirst and Extinction Event, which can even get rid of a Heliod, which turns into a creature. So given that Extinction Event on Odd can get rid of Heliod, I might want to Thirst Duxos. Um, yeah. 
And then we can still play Sanctum here. Hallowed Priest is going to pick up a counter right away. But our opponent is stuck on two lanes. So, yep. Yeah. Looks like a pretty straightforward turn three. Fruitful Harvest turn four Sanctum of All. Which should take over the game. Linden. Alright, that's going to gain the opponent two additional life. So I might have to take a turn off casting Extinction Event here before Speaker of the Heavens starts making Angels. So... Extinction Events on Odd. Should buy us enough time. Although we are still taking 5. And there's Heliod. Unlikely for them to turn Heliod into a creature with only 2 Devotion, but not impossible. Alright, so what color? Don't think it matters. Play Sanctum. And then I'm not gonna have the mana to use Tranquil Light, sadly, but we can do so next turn. Alright, Arkham puts them up to 4 Devotion, so one short of killing us. And I think we'll be fine now. So get additional white mana to activate Tranquil Light just in case. And this can get Stone Fangs to gain life or Calm Waters to draw cards. We'll get Stone Fangs here. And even drew our calm waters. So I don't really see us losing the game from here. Yeah, in fact, let's just play it safe and not even put Giganth in hand. Just keep as much mana as possible for Tranquil Light. Celebrant, sure. Just a single mana to activate. Might as well. Gotta give Tranquil Lights the light of day here. And then get our final Sanctum. And that should help us close out the game pretty quickly. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. So we got to see the deck in action against a wide range of opponents today. And as you could see, the more controlling decks, playing a lot of non-creature threats, are going to be the most problematic, since those tend to have more counter spells. Maybe cards like Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, can wipe away all our enchantments. So those are matchups we don't want to see. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, hyper-aggressive decks that can potentially kill us before we manage to stabilize can also be problematic. Although we do have tools to potentially still win those matchups with early removal and cards like Extinction Event to wipe the board. So those are definitely more winnable than some of the more controlling matchups. But yeah, against a lot of other creature decks, the enchantments are difficult to interact with, and the inevitability that Sanctum of All brings can quickly end the game as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.